All right, the big segment this week. Had the DMs, the holders last week. It's sort of time we start talking about La Liga because this is our top 10 central midfielders list. And I feel like we're, I might start speaking a Spanish accent here in a yeah. minute because this is a very... Uh, La Liga dominated this. Let's say that because I've tried. Yeah, I've tried my best, to, yeah, but we've both tried ig- to spread it out. I can't ignore the fact that the best, you know, central midfielders, number eights in the world, mm. right now, are coming from Spain. So we'll see how we go. We'll see how we um, go. This could I be the end of me. have got <laughs> like yeah, seven um, La Liga players. I think I've got, one. I've got five. You done well I've tried yourself. to spread it out, yeah. Because obviously, we could we could have four Madrid and four Barca. You could easily do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is just fucking boring. Yeah. No one wants to see that. He's, he's so. done better than me. So you kick us off. Then you always start off. Right. Number ten. Number ten. I've midfielders. got Doug Louise. Yeah. Number ten. Unbelievable for for Villa this season. Um, has like double digit goals. I think it's like ten goals mm. and um like eight assists or something, which is ridiculous. And I know he takes a lot of penalties, but still, you them. do have to score them. Yep. Um. And he's been he's been massive for them. Like he's brilliant on the ball. He can receive the ball in, in any part of the pitch. Yeah. He's just comfortable on it. And you know, there's times where he sits in a double pivot with Kamara. Obviously, mm. Kamara's been injured, but when he was fit, you know, they could sit in and and defend brilliantly, like yeah. he, they did against Arsenal, where they scored <laughs> the early goal. Yeah. Same thing with City. Um, and he plays ninety minutes every single game. Always fit. Never comes off. Always fit, and just a constant, just nuisance in there. Isn't <laughs> He's just brilliant. He's so. a nuisance. That's a good yeah. word for it. Yeah, I had him in my yeah, holders list. Yeah. But um, all right, my number 10. And this is someone, again, I think I, I like to have a bit of fun of my number 10s a lot. Yeah, you um, do. This is someone I don't think anyone would expect. I've got Leandro Paredes from Rome at the moment, who's Ooh. produced some great performance under De Rossi. Um, some of that's probably the most pure, <laughs> like, eight going around at the moment because he just, he just is in the middle of that midfield there. Um, good coverage behind him under Mourinho. <laughs> less expressive, but it feels like on the ball now going forward in terms of how Roma are playing their football, someone that's really, really impressive. He's, I think his average match rating is looking at just under an eight match rating as well. So he's put together some good performances across the last few weeks. Someone that can easily go under the radar because he plays in some, he used to play for PSG, he plays for the Argentinian team. Like you sort of just forget about him a bit, but yeah. he's played massive roles in all these teams he's gone to. And, and his Roma team, could it sound very special when it comes to how they finish the league season off, how they go in the Europa League. I just saw they battered Brighton in the yeah. in the Europa League as well. Yeah. And I think he'd been an important part of it. Someone that, like when I was looking through some of the names I was thinking about, I was like, and this is someone that doesn't probably get the, the props he probably deserves this season the way he's played. So a very multifaceted player can easily drop in and be the six. But this year where he's played a bit further forward, especially under De Rossi, uh, I think a very that's, underrated yeah, player. That's a eight. great shout. He's my number that's 10. That's a very good shout. I like that's that. My, that's my rogue one for the week. I like that, I've yeah. Because even at the World Cup, he was, yeah, he was big. He's very so, impressive. And yeah, that's a, that's a very good shout. Uh, nine, I've got Frankie de Jong. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I'm a massive believer in this guy. I yeah. think fully fit, if we're talking, if everyone's fit, I think he's generally a top five midfielder in, in the world. He's yeah. unbelievable. Obviously, he's had his injury troubles this season a little bit. Yeah. But again, he's been overplayed. Like even as soon as he comes back from these injuries, he's playing ninety minutes. Sure. He never comes off. Um, you know, he's he's dribbling is is brilliant. Um, you know, he's comfortable on the ball, uh, even off the ball. Like his defensive instincts allows him at times to drop into yeah. centre back. Yeah. Um, and obviously, our prefer him as sort of a more box to box. He has sort of had to play a bit deeper this year, yeah. and that's one part of his game I would like to him to sort of add his a bit more mm. goals a bit more assists yeah. I think he's only got I think a, chef, yeah. know, like maybe a couple of goals and I don't big. think he's got an assist this year yeah so obviously he has been playing a bit deeper um, two goals but again he's press resistant he's you know you can put him anywhere and he'll do a job and you know, he's one that if you're the next Barca manager coming in if you get him right you sort of build your your system your midfield around him exactly so he feels like a Barcelona type player, doesn't he? With the yeah. way he's had so much time on the ball. Yeah. Um, alrighty. I feel bad doing this, but there's some newer players. But I'll be number nine, a personal favourite of mine, but I couldn't put him any higher. It was Tony Kroos for me. Yeah. I know it's very low, yeah. but there's some players in some wicked form right now that I couldn't put below. If I'm talking about a career, man, him and someone else who I have very high up this list, they go up there as the greats for me, <laughs> I think. 
Oh, so underappreciated, Tony Curry. That yeah. World Cup for Germany, ridiculous. The goal against Sweden, I think it was. Like he, that's the way he's coming back with his Euros, it'd just be a great story to see him mm. take Germany to maybe a, a quarters or a semi where the, the team does not look ready to go anywhere near there. But I feel like to, if anyone can do it, Tony Curry is ready to do that. Yep. Massive. It, he almost feels like the Stephillian player at the moment because of his old age and you know the fitness. But whenever he comes in, you're like, boy, uh, this guy's incredible. I, I know Chua Manny and Kamavinga are good, but... And this guy comes in, you appreciate it. This is, mm. this is a proper midfielder. Yep. And he's the definition of boxer box. He can come back, you know, he, he can defend very, very well. But when he's on the edge of the area, I'm like seeing whip those shots mm. in, whip the ball into the area as well. A superb timeless yeah, player for me. Yeah. Just a shame yeah. there's a lot of people in form at the moment that couldn't put him any yeah. higher. So he's my he's, number nine. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Eight, I've got Barella. Yeah, like him. Been consistent at Inter for a number of years now, mm. probably since they won the league under Antonio Conte. He's been up there as probably one of the top three midfielders in Syria. Yeah. Um, you know, whether he's playing with Kahanoglu, Mkhitaryan, and Aslan, if they yeah. play him in there, he's just a constant threat. He pushes forward. Um, you know, he's always pressing the, the six and, mm. and getting the ball back. I think he had a, a huge chance on the weekend yeah, from massive. doing that, yeah. pressing the centre-back. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, Champions League final last year was considered as sort of the key if they were going to win that, yeah. if he could could play well. And obviously, he still played well, couldn't get over the line. Yeah. But that, you know, it's just one of those. You come against a juggernaut in City. Um, he's one of those players as well for Inter. For a lot, a lot of games this year, last year, he takes games by the scuff of the neck. Yeah. And he just feels like he's going to explode, I think, in next year or the year after and get fully recognised mm. as... One of one of the best going around in the world because I still think he's. I mean, I've got him eight, which maybe <laughs> is a bit low. Yeah, but soon still come. soon. Sorry. I think he's building nicely. Absolutely. Um, well, I liked your hack, uh, Kalinogu shout last week as a DM. I have him in my centre mids list um, at number eight. Another Inter player. Yeah. You probably, you probably he's done more defence work this season, but in terms of the ability to go both ways, he's got the, <laughs> the ability to be a box to box player and how well Inter defend. You probably don't need to really have to be a six in this team. Yep. He's been superb, like superb. Um, you, you know, you just, it's hard to put in a word, but whenever he's on the ball, it feels like he'll make the right decision sort of thing. Like, yeah. and in number six, that's so important. We look at Rodri, look at Rice, um, look at some of the best holding players, like the Busquets of the world. I feel like they always know the way to make the right turn, make the right body fat. I feel like, you know, Kanogu has this from that experience playing high up the pitch early in his career. Now, you know, reverting back to a more six slash eight position. I feel like he's had so much time to make the right pass. His passing array is ridiculous. Um, solid enough into a challenge and vital in that midfield alongside Barello and, yeah. um, and Mikatani, whoever ducks in there as well. So I think in terms of the all round package, one of the strongest right now, currently like mm, in the world, in terms 100%. of he can do everything. Um, love to see more of him, what he can do in the future mm. there. But that's why I've got him at number eight at the moment. But Gigi, I've been yeah. so impressed yeah. with his all-round his, game. Yeah, his stats are mad this year. He has he like ninety-three percent like pass accuracy, and he, he doesn't like his tackling. Percent. He doesn't miss a pass. Yeah. I feel like it's always mm. the right choice he has made. So yeah, I yeah, have a number eight. But I've been brilliant. very yeah. impressed with him. Yeah. Again, it's hard. these inter ones. That's, we again, they're in our top ten, which is obviously yeah. still really good. But you just it can't. Feels, it feels wrong, it feels to, put wrong so, to put him so low. Like, yeah, 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 it's just some of the other names. Form base, he's probably top four in the yeah. world, <laughs> Probably, which yeah. is ridiculous, but yeah, that's what yeah. he is. Uh, seven, I've got Ilkay Gundogan. Right, oh, so Ilkay okay. down there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, Obviously, nice. maybe a, a slight drop-off in terms of what we expect of him, Like, and it's a bloody high bar we've <laughs> yeah. got of him. But again, led uh, City to a historic treble, mm. clutch performances, clutch goals that's in indulged. just... Ridiculous games, yeah. you know, the FA Cup final, Everton, he did that, like, scorpion kick and the free kick. Um, always makes the right decisions. He yeah. kind of gets better as, as he gets older. Yeah. It sort of felt yeah. as he first came to City in yeah. his prime, it sort of felt it was a bit bit slow. It was going to take him a bit of time. Yeah. But his last couple of years have been unbelievable. Huge for that Pep Guardiola side. And, again, we've spoken a lot about Barca, how they have looked average mm. a lot. Yeah. At times this year, but he's been he's been carrying yeah, them through absolutely. at thirty three, and <laughs> prime yeah, to thirty three. <laughs> he's he's been huge, and he has I think ten assists and like five goals, That's and he's had to he play is. maybe a little bit deeper at times, but still pushing forward. And he was unbelievable against Napoli this morning. Some of that, his passing is ridiculous. That performance, so. yeah, 
Yeah. One of a lot of them that had a great performance, but gee, yeah, he's been ridiculous. Yeah, he's held that midfield together. I think in many regards. Oh, big time! If he's not there, <laughs> they're nowhere near this. This Christensen and Fermin Lopez. Yeah, I'm no. not sure they're going to get through well, with Fermin Lopez. Fair play to him. He's actually been ridiculous all right. last night as well. But, yeah, um, yeah, Gundogan's just he's just the key. Holds it all together. Yeah, especially um, with all the injuries. So <laughs> definitely, um, it wouldn't be easy for him. Like going from a city team that's always at the top to now a team that's and runs so well. You know exactly. Yeah. Barca's run like a chit shot yeah, at the exactly. moment, so exactly. fair play so to him. Credit to him, yeah. Um, we're saying the Barca line is trendy. I'm going with Frankie Dion with my number seven. Yeah. You, you talk about maybe November last year, maybe he's number one. <laughs> it's yeah, genuinely, it's, it's yeah. crazy how a year can almost change things. I was, and obviously as a United guy, we were so close to getting him a few times now, and I've been so keen to see what he'd look like. Were you a 90% club like, uh, like Goldbridge was? On De Jong, were you in the 90% club? Not quite there because it's Barcelona, <laughs> but yeah, no, no, I wish I was. Um, wish I was that delusional. Um, <laughs> boy, this seeing up close in Percival, I, I love those two legs, you know, I did in Barca in the, in the Europa League last year, and that was some of the best footballing I've seen in terms of like watching United mm-hmm. and watching other teams play in a long time, or maybe even ever. That was just two teams probably at their two peaks over the last sort of three years almost. Mm. Going at it, and Frankie Young was sort of massive at that midfield. Another one that, you know, when when he's fit, you can know when he's fit and when he's not overplayed. Just he's never too slow. He's always up to speed with the game. Never out of the game. Always involved. One touch passes, transitioning, can play on the swivel. Mm. Someone that the vision as well is just there's one time passes in and out. The package like, and it's you don't see many of these players. I don't think of him. I think McAllister even. Guys, you can play with the head and the swivel and play those quick one-time passes, yep. long balls, short balls. He's got the lot. And you're right, if it's not wasn't for injuries and overplaying, we would be seeing the best. I think yeah. you look at like he's so young still. He's he still yeah. maybe came from Ajax as a, as a leader, and he's come to Barcelona as had to become a leader because of mm. the excess of players that have come there. He's so only twenty six. So he's, he's got like, and we look at some of the names of these midfielders here are quite older. He's got at least ten years. It looks like in terms of yeah. a, a midfielder because they go forever. These guys. So he's my number seven, but. Would be a lot higher. Oh yeah, probably should be, but it's just yeah. the injuries and a bit, bit, bit of bit of bit of form at the moment. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, six. I've got Alexis McAllister. There he is, the yeah, big guy. He, he was. It should be. He should be number one. Yeah, but you know, yeah, I wish nah, number one. Um, yeah. No, nah, but I mean, where do I even start? His last sort of eighteen months has been ridiculous. just ridiculous. ridiculous. World Cup, he was unbelievable. You know, helped Brighton get to the Europa League. Mm. Many of the big clubs wanted him. United. Uh, maybe Arsenal were interested. Chelsea, mm. obviously, we got him in, at thirty-five million. He's been <laughs> ridiculous. Thirty-five million. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You could pay triple that, and you probably couldn't even argue it. Yeah. Um, you know, he's unbelievable on the boys. He's, he's ha- had to start the season as a six. Yep. And I think now that's actually helped him because yeah. with fifty-fifty balls or just w- when Endo's in a bit of space, he now knows where he needs to be yep. to help Endo. And and that partnership at the moment is. It's it's just ridiculous. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, he's been he's been brilliant. He he is brilliant. He's humble. Just I mean, what what can you what what's wrong with him? He's just brilliant. I have a bro, man. I'm gonna have to buy Liverpool. Keep <laughs> his name in the back. I know so he's quickly becoming my my favorite Liverpool player. My in favorite player in the world at the moment. Yeah, he's brilliant. I absolutely love him. Superstar. Um, alrighty, my six player. Not quite the same love I have for him, but he's still a good, great player. It's Kamavinga for me, number six. Ooh, okay. A little bit lower down. Um, gee, but he's been important this season when you think of yeah. what he had to do. He's played left back. He's, he's played in midfield. He's had to play deep. He's had to play as the, the more natural box-to-box type role. I think we'll see the best of him probably next year when they get when they get Chouamani at the six. Yeah, and Him at the eight and Bellingham at the ten. An actual striker. I and find. Cruz and Modric are maybe... Even if they don't leave. Maybe just one of them is there to yeah. just come off the best. Like, that's when I can see the best of him because Ancelotti, in his right and right, so has sometimes played Modric and Cruz in there to try and give that experience and that control. But I want to see what he can do on alone when he's yeah. there alongside Chouamani or even at the Euros. If he gets a kick at the Euros in midfield as well, France, we don't know what's going to go on there. Um, he's a very, very impressive player. He's that lengthy, long sort of guy where he just feels like he can make a challenge from everywhere mm. as well. Very solid on a challenge. Still want to see what he can do offensively we're going pushing forward I yep. want to see a bit more in that game there but Jay for the job he has to do this season at Real wherever he has to play if he has to be in goal if he has to <laughs> mm, yeah. he'll do it so yep. fair play to him um, yep. number um, six unfortunately he just missed out of just yeah fair it's enough. just one of those you could put you know you could put so he many you can put all of them in yeah but slide them all yeah, yeah exactly um, top fives now top fives five we've got Granite Xhaka yeah 
Like it. Um, his past 18 months has not just been one of the best midfielders in the world, but one of the best players in the world. Mm. I think you could generally make an argument. His Good. form's been ridiculous. Obviously, unbelievable at, at Arsenal and was um, so close to helping them win that Premier League. And um, I mean, it's mental to say, but he might have gone to another level at Leverkusen. Yeah, you I know, think on, he the, on the ball, he's yeah. been probably even better. He's, you know, they're, they're so attacking, right, with their, yeah. their wing backs. We talk about it so much. But a guy in Xhaka, you know, you expect him to maybe play a bit more defensive. Yep. And maybe he's not getting as many goals, as many assists. But he's still pinging them out to Gramado and, and Frimpong and st- still helping the defence yep. with, with Andrik or Palacios, whoever's in yep. there. Um, you know, he's, he's sort of the heartbeat of, of that it's team, like not it. even that midfield, yeah, that team. And like you know, he keeps them ticking. You know, we saw when he, he didn't play in, in the Europa League, I know they made a whole host of changes. But when he doesn't play... There, there is a little bit missing in there, a little yeah. bit of just some, a bit, bit of presence, a bit. Of, yeah. He's got that bit of aura about him. Yeah, he, he actually yes. does. So, um, yeah, I think easily one of the not only the best players, but probably the best midfielder in, in the Bundesliga yeah. by quite some distance. It speaks for itself, really. Yeah, it's been superb. Yeah. Um, all right, my number five is someone you mentioned earlier. I've got Nicola Barella on my yeah. number five. <laughs> this guy because <laughs> I, I, you think next two years I think the Euros everyone will realise yeah oh my god this yeah. guy's good because that That's, yeah. that Italian team I think is going to be very wing back and sort of like wing orientated mm. there's going to be a bit of problem yeah, in that midfield Marco area and- I think that's where they were their weakest, but this guy's gonna stand. That's what, this guy's gonna stand out. I feel like Valverde, um, Valverde, um, Burrell in there. Like in terms of, he's gonna. You talk about heartbeats. He might be the heartbeat of it- this Italian team. I feel like he's ex- almost plays beyond his age grade. If you know what I mean, he always plays like a real like experienced later out there, like thirty five year old that's sitting there and done it. That's what the way he sort of plays. And yeah. you're right, he's pressing. I, I didn't pick up until you, you reminded me that that pressing from the weekend as well against a Bologna side that was. Very comfortable in possession mm. throughout the game. Yep. He was important in terms of trying to slow them down, slow their progression down, break them up a little bit. Because you know, second half it was tough going for Inter, but you know he kept them holding together. He's he's a workhorse as well. Just yep. ever on the pitch does not stop running. And I feel like yeah, that jump you're talking about, or that jump in respect, or it's not jump in performance because we've seen it now for a, yeah. for a year. That jump in respect, I think, could come in the next yeah. you know, a few months. Yeah. That'd be know, very, Champions yeah. League, Euros. Maybe start next season. You could be seeing a guy that's touted as you know one of the top three into well top four, top five. You know that number yeah. number eight in the world because he's got the whole package. He's got a bit of composure about him, and that's the biggest thing for me. These players here, we've all got. I just feel like they're so composed on the ball, and this guy's yep. epitomizes all that. So yeah, he's my number yep. five. Very nice. Four. I've got Tony Cruz. Yeah, Tony. Four. Yeah. I mean, the, I don't really need to I- explain too much. I mean, even this season. You know, this guy's looking at maybe retiring, maybe leaving Madrid. He still has like seven assists this year, which is still, I think, equal. It's equal second, if you, if which is there, it's yeah. still mental. Yeah. And he's uh, maybe playing a bit more defensive because yep. he can't get around the pitch as as he used to. But you know, we we often speak about players their impact on the pitch, but I think off the pitch, I think he's doing unbelievable, yeah. like just wonders for Bellingham and Camavinga, and specifically that midfield group, that yep. young midfield group that's coming through. Um, you know, Brahim Diaz. Yeah, um, massive. Oh, what's the youngster's name? Gula. G- Gula, Gula, yeah, yeah, him. So, again, on the pitch, off the pitch, doesn't matter. He's sensational. And still, for me, you can chuck him in and, and you know what you're going to get from him. <laughs> chuck him in there, you know exactly. he's going to work. Cook him in one leg, exactly. he'll still put a performance up. Exactly. What a guy, Tony Gross. Yeah. The pro- so good, proper man. football. Oh, so good. <laughs> um, alrighty. My number four is going to be Pedri, which Ooh. might be harsh, but I've I was, oh, three and four I was flipping around with, but I think because of availability a little bit, because I know it's been recent, mm. but it just feels like guys pick up a lot of injuries recently. I feel yeah. like when he's on the pitch, probably, or maybe even the best, I just think so can circus isn't so quality, but I'm worried a bit by the injury problems and yeah. we haven't seen the we haven't seen the best any bus on a play this season, but even himself, him and De Jong, I feel like have had a bit of a drop off from last year to this year. Yeah. We can expect that with being overplayed and deformed the whole team, but this levels this guy to come, and I'm still waiting for. That. I, don't, I don't think I have to go too much into Pedri. We all know what he's all about. Yeah. We talk about him every week. We know his it quality. Like. It's just a matter of. I'm worried. I'm and just very and worried. I don't have him or Gavi. And I originally did have them in this list. Yeah, Pedri and Gavi. It's just 
obviously the injuries now, but we don't know what the future looks like for these guys. Are they going to be the same they're gonna, With how Barca are run at the minute, they're going to be overplayed and yeah. these injuries will keep on happening. Yeah. So are, are they top 10 midfielders? Absolutely, 100% yeah. fully fit. Yeah, they're in there. 100% they're in. They're in. <laughs> they, were, they were like, I think, six and seven yeah. in mine. Yeah. But again, now they're, in, they're obviously a couple of injuries and we don't know what the future's... It's worrying. Hold, so... So yeah, he's yeah, these two. But yeah, unbelievable when he plays, yeah. absolute superstar. Uh, number three. Th- three. I've got Modric at number three. Nice. Yep. Luka. Um, again, similar to Cruz. <laughs> I mean, Ballon d'Or winner, unbelievable for his country. The amount of times he's pushed and carried Croatia to wow. semis and unbelievable performances yeah. in the World Cup. Um, you know, fully deserving of the Ballon d'Or, fully deserving of of the respects that he, everyone you know bestows upon him and. Yeah. Um, you know, he deserves to be in that conversation with Xavi Iniesta. Yeah, it does. You know, the, these kind of players. And, you know, mo- most people say he's, or some people, most people, may, some he's better than Iniesta. And, and you know, that, that's... I wouldn't argue it too much, yeah. yeah. You know, he's just unbelievable. And, again, he has made a decent amount of appearances off the bench. But even when he does come off the bench, he, s- he scores goals in the last yeah. minute. In the 80th minute, I yeah. think he scored a couple of weeks ago. Li- yeah, we're really late. A banger. Yeah. Um, and just uh, just a, a natural leader, yeah. and someone that you can just look up to, and I mean, you just I don't think there's anyone that that hates him or Cruz. No, the most <laughs> likable footballers, exactly. Going they're around just so like. they're just elegant, aren't they? Yeah, the so. last of the dying breed of just pure yeah. beautiful footballers. Pure, yeah, <sighs> yeah. Well, yeah. We see how you go. Uh, <laughs> number three, I got Ilkay Gundogan. Wow. Yeah, I got him. <laughs> I got Hunt list. I love I like that. Ilkay Gundogan. Um, I think arguably. One city there, travel in terms of. I touched on it on yeah. the Monday show. I used to always say February, March, maybe to Jansville was the months of Ilkay. Just pop up, hit score important goals and, and big games at important moments. He did that last year. He did that the run in the years before for the titles. If he doesn't have these big games, maybe Liverpool holding three Premier League titles already. Like maybe Man United get a title with during the COVID. Like maybe, just, maybe, he yeah. has these ridiculous runs where. The guy doesn't just stop. He just doesn't stop scoring. Mm. And obviously we can't see that now at Bars because, yeah, he's has to help out Christensen, who's a centre-half playing it, and number six. Obviously he's had to play much deeper this year, but we still see the passing array. Mm. We still know he's a treble winner. Barcelona are, are turning it around, and you know it's been, I think, almost solely on his back. And then those younger guys like Kobasi, like Yamal, um, like Fermin Lopez lifting as well. But I... You'd be lifting because you're seeing what this guy is doing here. He was supposed to come here and just help out, assist a great group. He's had to be the leader of this group now because of the yeah. injuries and how it's all sort of fallen apart. So that almost adds to his regime. As poor as Barcelona have been, because he's been so good, it's almost added to his regime, added mm, to his respect 100%. I've got for him. I probably could have put number one in the last season with the way yeah. he'd finish off there. Definitely in the He was definitely in my mind. Probably, I think I started him at number one and just slowly pushed him down, but... Absolute superstar and deserves yeah. it all. Um, he's my number three. Very well said. Uh, number two, I've got Bernardo Silva. He's where. See, I don't have him in this list, but yeah, I mean, yeah, like a ten or, yeah, yeah, I've got him in this list. Uh, you know, for me, obviously, he plays in that midfield three, yeah, and he does absolutely. drop in and and help the the, the defense. And I mean, you know, his Champions League performance last year is the one that sticks out for me. The four 0 against Madrid, where he scored two. Sensational Crazy. goals, and that yeah. was against the likes of Modric and Cruz yeah. and these sorts of players. And even this season, he sort of kicked on. You know, there has been talks of a couple of City players dropping in form, but mm. not Bernardo Silva. He's been relentless. He's yeah. been composed on the ball. He's helped out defensively. He's, he always plays, and he's, he's. I can't remember the last time the guys had an injury. <laughs> Maybe he's missed the odd game. Yeah, but he I mean, he's just he's just always fit, and he's he always plays at such a high level that sometimes. We just kind of brush it aside mm. because it's 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 what we expect. expect yeah. But you can't ignore how good he is and how good he's he's been. Absolutely. So. Yeah, I was telling Tony, but I think I might put him on my number tens list. Yeah. But yeah, def- that definitely. Especially this season, you have to play a lot of different positions. Yeah. Bernardo Silva. Yeah. You put him in a right wing list. You put him in left wing list. Yeah, you exactly. can put him in a ten list. Ten, yeah, and eight. Yeah. So, he's yeah. everywhere. Um, all right, my number two. It's gonna be controversial. I'm gonna go Fede Valverde at number two. Yeah. Um. Easy to put him number one, but I think I have him in a soft spot for number one. So, of he's the next generation. We just, we've mentioned a few big names from Real. This guy's going to be the next superstar yeah. Real. Like, I think he already is, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he, he basically, he's that lead. He's, he's there every single game, isn't he? He's the yeah. centre of that midfield three. 
whether he drops in, whether he pushes forward, he can be a right winger, a right back. <laughs> yeah, he's the army, like the Swiss Army knife in many regards. He can just do everything. Mm. He's got the whole package, and he's dangerous at both both ways. That's the thing. They, all these guys I've got, yeah, they've they're bo- good both ends, but they're probably better at one way than the other. But yeah. Valverde, I don't think you can say he's defensively or attackingly better than each other. He's the most balanced <laughs> midfielder you can ask for, <laughs> um, and he is the f- or the present, the future, whatever you want to call it. He is it because Real that. Screams captain's armband and just oh for sure titles for sure. and trophy lifts galore for yeah. this guy. He's he's a winner, he's a goal scorer, he's a he's a leader, and he's just smooth, smooth operator. Yep. Bit of smooth operator about him. He just when he's on the ball, you know the right decisions gonna be made, and he's an absolute superstar. So yep. he's my number two. Yep, and Fetty Valverde is my, my number one. Yeah, <laughs> I mean he's just ridiculous. He's so versatile. Um, he he's just so comfortable on the ball in terms of. He'll take a lot of risks, yeah. but that allows the attacking players to be freed up in Vinicius and, you know, soon to be Mbappe and, yeah. and all these guys, yeah. um, you know, which makes them look so, so good. Mm. And, um, you know, obviously his versatility, he can play on the wing. He has done it a lot. Yeah. But obviously, Senemid, we, we know what he's capable of. His work rate, his forward runs are ridiculous. Stormy. He created a goal on, on the weekend from running from the midfield into the box yeah. and... Obviously, it was an own goal, but because of his movement, it allowed that to happen. And Sorry. you know, when when Modric and Cruz, if they're not leaving, they'll be on the bench. But when you got a, a guy like him, you put your faith in him, and and he's one that Madrid fans just get to adore for the next <laughs> ten years. Yeah, he's that good. He can play at this level for ten years. Ages, ages. Yeah. Oh, superstar. <laughs> Look, you really lose Ronaldo, you get Vinicius. Yeah. Lose Modric, you get a yeah, and uh, and like <laughs> another point, like that Madrid midfield, we know it's stacked. Chua, many Valverde, Camavinga, Cruz, Modric, and he started like he's I think tw- twenty six out of twenty eight games in that midfield. The two the two that he hasn't started, he's come off on the bench, and that's probably been because of Champions League or other cups. Yeah, so it just goes to show that Ancelotti is like this is the main guy. I feel like he's the number one midfield at the moment. Yep. He's that guy. Yep. Um, my number one is a bit of a soft spot kept for Luka Modric. Luka he's my Modric, number one. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, Can't I, argue I, it. I still think yeah, I still think he's underrated somehow. I, even though everyone gives you him know props, yeah. I feel like he's so underrated because it's the whole thing of you don't realize what you've gotten to. You sort of lose a sort of thing, and yeah, we're all being tossed up of him and Cruz both leaving. Like, I know you've we just mentioned all the names they've got. They've still got great names there. Got youngsters coming through. Probably got the next ten years planned out with hmm. their signings, but. These guys are just like genera like these are generations. This is beyond what we can comprehend now. Because when yeah. you when they leave, then you'll realize, damn, we really missed a, a Luka Modric in a Champions League type game. And that's what I think of. I think Luka Modric. I think Champions League. I think yeah. of big moments, <clears throat> massive plays. Talk about like the Valverde type runs. What about with Modric for the ball at his feet, driving into spaces, opening up, playing the pass, and just composure, composure personified. Yeah. This guy doesn't feel like he's yeah. been phased in his career. For how old is he now? 36, 37? I don't think he's ever I think been. He's 38. <laughs> 38. That's I more of the point. Never yeah. been phased once in his exactly. career. For like you wouldn't, you wouldn't look at it. You'd no. think he's like maybe like early 30s. No, exactly. And he doesn't rely on his pace or mm. strength. He's just a smart player. And yeah, it, I think he has to go up alongside Iniesta and alongside Javi. 100%. As yeah. just the leaders of that whole great era in Spanish midfield. Maybe even better. Maybe. Considering just. With what he does with Croatia Exactly with, like, That's a country that yeah. With all due respect Is not a big Footballing no. nation As far as I'm Absolutely concerned Absolutely not But I mean That Finals. era with him And Rakitic yeah. And Mandzukic <sighs> And Perisic And Straight all the itches Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Straight to uh, it off I get that team <laughs> um, You know that team was brilliant And it was led by The natural Just Leader In, in Modric Just yeah If only you're running out Behind a man It's that it's man there. Modric yeah that midfield, I think we'll have to, we must be saying over the summer, look at some of the best midfield trios, but Casemiro, Modric and Kroos would, <sighs> it, we all already knew they were ridiculous, but it's even more the fact they keep going at this old yeah. age they're at. Yeah, 100%. Better run over our names one more time for we wrap yep. this one up. Uh, so 10, Douglas Louise, yep. 9, De Jong, 8, Barella, 7, Gundogan, 6, McAllister, 5, Xhaka, Four Cruz, three Modric, two Bernardo Silva, one Valverde. All right, Leandro Paredes at number ten, Tony Kroos number nine, uh, Hakan Chalanogli number eight, Frankie Dion seven, Camavinga six, Nicolo Barella five, Pedri four, Ilkay Gundogan three, Fede Valverde two, and Luka Modric yep. numero uno. 
Best, that, that was I know some of our best lists we've done yeah, so far. Good list. 